Servo motion axis groups, why they are important and things you need to know when it comes to using those, right? Our understanding, well, we're using servos all together. So when it comes down to it, you have uh, your motion groups, right? So if the motion group is not happy, if it's not synced, right? There's, this, there's actually a bit in the actual group. When you make the group, it makes certain tags associated with that. Um, and this does not pertain to uh, this, this actually works with Kinetic 6000s like I'm showing here. It actually works with SIP motion. So uh, Kinetic 6, uh, 5500 or a Kinetic 5700. Um, so servos in general, right? These, all, these rules all pertain to everything that I'm, I'm talking about, right? So when it comes down to your motion group sync, we want to make sure we understand we can always right click and go to monitor group tag, okay? So in the group tag, this gives you all the associated tags with that group, okay? So what we're concerned with in this video is we're gonna talk about the motion grouped, or group synced, right? So uh, that's basically saying, and you can monitor group status if you want to, but really what we're, we're, to make things simple, I always come over here and look at the group synced. Now, what do I do with that bit? is I come over here and actually come and put that in my logic and says so that I don't command any kind of um, motion instructions or anything like that to the servo without that being synced because if you try to control something that is not is not like grouped together and it's not synced with the whole system then ba basically you're going to get an error right so um, one thing to be the timing important is you need to go over to your properties, whether you go to properties up top or you go to properties down here. It doesn't matter as long as you go to properties, make sure that you go to date and time and you go to time synchronization. Now I am using a Cerakote network, so um, I don't have SIP motion, but if you are using SIP motion, make sure that basically your grandmaster set correctly and stuff like that. Um, if meaning if you're the only processor in the system and you don't have like a switch and you're not going through a switch and it's going through like a to work with a bunch of other servos and other processors and make sure that if there's no complexity like that then obviously the grandmaster is the processor that you're working with but when it comes to sit motion that's a little that gets a little bit complex with that uh, it's a lot easier with with uh, Kinetic 6000 because it's a different protocol. It's it's a fiber protocol. It's, it's uh, again, it's Cerakos. But the same print principles come apply. You want to enable time synchronization. With that said, what are the most important things about the synced and about how that works, right? For one, never try to command, whether it be a motion, uh, motion direct commands. So if you try to motion direct commands right here and you try to turn it on, off, uh, try to run it, try to stop it, try to jog it, whatever the case may be. If you can't do that, if you have a failure to do that, it might be because you have your jog or your your motion group might not might not be synced, right? So all axes in the motion group have to be configured correctly. Hands down, they have to be configured correctly. That means the associated axes that you put inside of your motion group. So my motion group currently has one, two, three axes the what i've put in inside of the setup needs to be perfectly set up with the actual physical devices meaning this servo right here when the one with the wheel on it is this servo right here and what happens is that uh, drive and motor combination is an mpl dash b 310 pm okay so this PM, uh, there's actually a couple different versions of this being, being whatever encoder could have been put on this motor. Um, look at your catalog number on your motor and you should be able to tell that, okay? So just verify that that's set up right. Sometimes I've gotten tricky positions where that was set up improperly, although the group was still synced, when you still couldn't control motion. Um, so that was uh, on a SIP motion pr principle, so our protocol. So just keep that in mind. Make sure, I guess if I can highlight anything, make sure your encoder is set properly. All right, so that's a lot of things uh, that tend to mess you up as far as that goes, as far as group sync. Now, um, 
if you come back, what it's really trying to do is make sure you have your feedback correct. So the feedback loop is correct. Now, what? how does this work? So why do I have this in the, the main rung right here? Let's go offline and let's actually download to this and you'll see that the bit actually goes from, from a state of zero to one. So it's gonna come over here and it's gonna check all of my things that I've set up inside of the program, right? So as we're downloading, um, and it won't take but just a second to download because it's a very small program. But as we download, we come over here, what we're seeing is as soon as this gets done, go, we'll go back into remote run, you see my bit down here, my job, uh, my motion axis group synced right here is not on. It's not, it's not a value of one. Now I can't toggle it or nothing like that. I can't do that because it's not toggleable. But what it's doing is it's checking to make sure my system is set up properly. Everything inside of my motion group is set up and working just like it should. So what I've previously set up inside of my each one of my axes is actually associated properly with the physical devices. Okay. So just make sure that, that you understand that. And really it's checking the feedback loop making sure that all that is good but when it comes down to it it can't control something that it doesn't know what it is physically now the motion group again uh, is synced is is very important that you know too if i pull if i just pull the Cerakos network the group sync still is valid now you might be thinking to yourself well if you can't communicate and your io tree down here is messed up well yes of course if your io is improperly put in then it won't work However, if you just lose communication temporarily, your group will still be synced. The, the time frame of, at least on Cerakos, when it comes to sit motion, things act a, a little bit different. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the most important thing, if I, if I can get out of this video that, to, to tell you is if, if the group is not synced, you cannot control it. You can't command it to do anything with motion X direct commands. You can't control it through servo uh, instructions. You can't do anything. So make sure that you understand that your motion axis group is like your supervisor, right? So it's like it's supervising all of the, the servos you have in your group, right? So it's basically saying, okay, I'm the high level of, do, of everything and I have to be good before everything below me is good or else we're not going to work as a team. We're not going to work as, you know, the, the machine's not going to work as it should. So um, with that said, you know, hopefully that gave you the, the nuts and bolts of a servo group, how things that, you know, should be set, how, you know, it, and things to look out for if that motion group, well, really why the motion group sync bit is important, right? So my, always monitor that bit. Um, and, and no, you cannot do motion access uh, or my direct commands right here if it's not synced, right? So just keep that in mind as well. And hopefully you learned a lot from this video. We'll see you guys on the next one.